Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This week I'm going to teach you how to use Elementor Pro's collect submissions functionality to track your email list opt-ins. About two years ago, I created a video teaching you how to integrate MailChimp with Elementor. And you must have really liked that one because it's one of our more popular videos. Even though this video is two years old, we still pretty frequently get comments on it asking questions. Recently, a question came through that got me thinking. Arielle wants to know, do you have a video explaining how to separate what list people subscribe to? That's a great question, Arielle, and thank you for watching. Just like a lot of things on the web, there are multiple ways that we can do this. The more I started thinking about this, the more I thought that we could take advantage of something that's already built into Elementor Pro, the collect submissions functionality. If you aren't aware, Whenever you create a form using Elementor Pro, you have the option to store that form data onto your website. If you add this option to your forms, whenever somebody submits form data, it gets stored into an area in Elementor called Collect Submissions. This allows you to not only have a backup of this data, but to analyze and gain insights on what is working well and what might need some improvements. So that means when we create email opt-ins as Elementor forms on our site, we can keep track of exactly how people are subscribing to our list. Today, I'll show you how to set your form so it can collect submissions and where to go to get that data. Let's get started. I've created this pop-up using Elementor Pro and inside I've added an opt-in form. Now I'm not going to get into how to integrate MailChimp and Elementor and connect those two things because I've already made a video on that. So if you need to learn how to do that, be sure to watch that video. I've also made a video on how to create this style of pop-up. So you can watch that video if you want to learn step-by-step -step how I did this. I'll put both links to those videos in the description box down below. I do have this form here. And if we edit this, this is where we're going to need to connect the collect submissions function. We do this under actions after submit. So if I click on this, you'll see that I have MailChimp connected already. So I need to add another action. I'll hit this plus sign. And the first option you see is collect submission. So we'll click that. And that's really all you have to do because it will just say underneath that collected submissions will be saved under Elementor submissions. So I'm going to hit update on this. And there's one thing that I do want to mention before we close this out, and that's under the form fields. What I always like to do is name my form. And the reason for this is that if you have multiple forms, multiple opt-ins, it just makes it easier when they're labeled. So when you do go to collect submissions, you know exactly where everything's coming from. And I'll show you that a little bit later, but let's just name this pop-up form. And again, I'm going to go down to the bottom, hit update, and now I'm going to show you where to go to see those submissions. I'm now at the Elementor submissions page. To get here, you'll want to go to Elementor and then hit the submissions tab. And you can see I've done a test on this pop-up form because the information is all in here. So we have the test email that I used and then the form name, which is pop-up form. So remember when I said to name your form, it shows up right in here. And then it also shows the page. Now, since this is a pop-up, it's showing the name of the actual pop-up that I created, which was 10% off. And then we also have an ID and the submission date. So this gives you quite a bit of information about the person that submitted to the form. Now, this will also get populated into my MailChimp list as well. And you can do things in MailChimp to filter out where people have been coming from as well. But I like to do it in here. It's another place to get information. And I think that it really does keep it pretty organized in the submissions tab. You do have the option to filter so you can see all the different forms on the site and you can create multiple forms in Elementor and add this functionality. So it's nice to be able to have it all in one place and use these different filters to see what really is working well and what isn't. 
If I click on this test, you get even more information. Now, since this is a pretty simple form, we just have the person's name and their email address and then the actions log. So it does say that this was added to MailChimp. So this is a good way to test that things are working as well. So I really like how all of this is laid out, especially if you have longer forms, you can add the collect submissions for that as well. And all the information from the form fields will be populated in here. Another thing that I'd like to mention before we wrap up the tutorial is that you can export all of these to a CSV file so you can get all that information downloaded into a spreadsheet, which is pretty nice. That's it for today's video. Let me know if you think this would be a useful addition on your website. This is something that we've added to the forms on our own website and we found it really useful, so I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you'd like to get even more tips, resources, and a chance to win a free website evaluation, head over to the link in the description and sign up for our newsletter. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.